Right, what's up everybody? It's the Hillbilly Harvester here. DCS my call sign is Mattis14 Gala Walker. I'm gonna be doing a quick little video, um just kind of my procedures and how I go about the Hercules. I've seen a lot of you guys have some questions about CDU input and how to get the autopilot to work. Um, I'm not really going to go over controls or how to plan out your load or, or anything like that. I, I kind of have a load I have planned out already and this is just going to be kind of more of a tutorial on how I go about starting up and getting the autopilot to get set up and getting coordinates entered into the CDU and I'll kind of show you guys how to do that, get up and flying and, and just how I how I go about logistics is a very important part and like I said I've seen a lot of questions and stuff in the discord about it earlier and I figured it'd just be easier to make a video so it'll be probably pretty rudimentary I might be a little slow at times uh, just bear with me and I'll try not to make too many pauses um, so first of all basically I just like to go into the unit type and select the Hercules and stuff Bandar I'm sorry, not Bandar. Aldafra and Almanhad are going to have the unlimited supplies that you can load up to take to forward airfields. Once you get in your aircraft selected, it'll give you your comms plan and everything, your ATCs. I'll put a screenshot up here of how you get to this range. You have to do it in the SRS um, for the AM ARC radio it's kind of weird but I'll also show you how to get to tack on so once we are basically in our bird like I said I, I have it set up already where I have my load so I'm just gonna hit the ground crew rearm I don't have any special crates that I'm gonna take so I'm just gonna load up I'm a, uh, GBU 31 v3s we're gonna bring some aim 9 mic because there's zero up there and we're also going to bring some more stuff for the A-10 guys. The Hercules does depend a lot on your weight. You will kind of feel it. Um, the heavier you are, you'll just be more sluggish on takeoff and you'll fall faster. Well, I'm good at 30%. 25 to 30% will get me pretty much from anywhere on the map. I need to go at least one way. Uh, if I need to divert, it'll. St I won't have my fuel warning light on, so it'll still be above 15, about 16, 18%. Request refueling. Request Copy. rearming. So, basically for the Copy. startup stuff, in the waypoints, if you want to get a piece of paper down, or you have a good memory, there's a specific coordinate that we need to go into the CDU for the Hercules. It's the decimal minute. If you go left click and left alt, it'll bring up a whole coordinate menu, and that'll basically follow um, or if you have your mark placed, see how it kind of placed that little pin where my mouse was and I, and I press left click? It's going to give me my MGRS click, my latitude, longitude, decimal minutes, which is the one we need. Or, to get the same thing, we can press Alt-Y twice. And see how up above here this number changed from it was originally on, I believe, this one. If we press left alt twice, this is the same decimal minute latitude and longitude coordinate that is right here. Well, not right here because I should be right here. Like I said, it'd be a little rudimentary. Just let it work with me here. I don't like to use this, this screen. There's a lot going on. It seems to confuse people. Um, it is kind of nice because if you go back to here, it will still be up, but then you kind of have to go back and forth between your map and then blah, blah, blah. So I like to just make sure left alt and Y two times from when you load into the map and you'll get the decimal minutes that are always up on the top left of the corner. If I go place, you see how they're moving as I move my cursor. If I leave my cursor here and write down this number, I already have my numbers written down for my waypoints um, on a piece of paper. I'm just doing this as basically a demonstration. So I'd write 2736511 for my north. And then east, here's the only thing about the east. You have to add a different, you have to add an additional number before or after the east number. So before it starts. So east would be 0545415153 because on the east number you have to have just that many decimals to enter in or digits to enter into the CDU. 
So always, 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 and this is between the A-10 and the Hercules and even the Blackhawk um, for entering coordinates, always enter a zero before your eastern number, 05454 five, four in this case. And then I'm also going to do another waypoint up here, so I do 2740651 east 05439872. And then if I wanted my last waypoint to be at LAR, which is our destination where we're going today, that coordinate is going to be, we'll say, 2740488 east zero five four two three four eight four and you really don't need to worry about the elevation um, you can but it's just another step that you don't really need to do and I, I don't usually do so once we have our coordinates we have our load being loaded and our fuel being sucked out you can hear it being sucked out we're gonna go back in and basically start up the CDU and get the bird going if you if it's getting dark and you want a little cursor uh, light, you can left alt and L and it'll bring up like a flashlight for you. All we're going to do, it's very simple for a startup in the Hercules. So you're going to have a battery switch on the top. On that same panel, just on the left side, hit the switch to APU. This is going to be your external power or your APU power. If it's off, it's going to use engine power. If there's no engine power, obviously it's off and there's no battery power. It's not using any juice. So at this point, we can go down here. Just above the windshield is going to be your actual APU information and start. You can just run that to start, hold it with a right click. You can let go and it'll run up by itself and get started up. I said I'm not going to go over key binds, but you will need key binds to shut your doors kind of go back out here because you start with all your doors open and down. I like to just have those nice key binds, easy access. But as we're starting up, I like to shut the windows. It's getting dark. It's going to be cold. Can't fly with them down. We will drop our HMDs and turn the brightness down on those just a little bit. So now that our APU is up and running, all we need to do up here, I know this looks very intimidating, all these breakers and switches and everything, but none of it's really modeled. All we need to do is under the, the battery power switch that we put on, Refueling complete. is our APU is now fired up. We're telling it we want to use APU power, the battery's on. All we need to do is put our air bleed switch on, and once our air bleed pressure gets to 40%, we can look at our engine start panel and you can start these in any order you'd like. I could start number four and I just click it to start. Green lights come on. We're gonna look at here. I'm gonna let go at this point once it hits about 30, 31% and it's gonna automatically climb and rise. Once we hit 40%, we just gotta rearm complete. As an engine hits 40%, let's try number two. Okay, green light. It's building pressure back up as we lost it. I can let go. Number two is going to start. All right, how about number one? Wait till 40%. We'll hit start. Green light. And see, that one's going real quick because the, one of the engines is starting and we're giving another pressure in the system. So we can go ahead and probably start up number three right now as well because we're already at 40. As long as this top number says 40, we're all good to go. Okay go back out here, I let go, and we're starting it up. I know it's been 10 minutes already, I'm trying to just give you guys some information. Our cargo is loaded from what we did, so I'm going to go ahead and close, oh, I didn't do my start thing here. If you guys need a dome light, pilot lighting, just rotate that down up in there, additional from your cursor. Here we have our light panel. Uh, we can rotate our landing lights up and these are our actual on and off switch for the landing light. On, off, on, off. You can kind of see the lights going on up there. And these just rotate them. If you don't put these up, they won't, they won't show up. They'll just show down. Um, but this over here is very important. This is our auxiliary pump. This is what controls the back door. So we need to make sure that's on. We can leave it on during flight. Uh, it's no, no big deal. That's why the, the door wouldn't open. 
So, a lot of people ask also how to get the RWR up. Usually at this point, you know, I would go in and I want to basically move all this stuff over. This is kind of getting a little bright for me because it's getting dark. So I'm going to go back in here and turn the displays a little down on both sides, past uh, co-pilot and pilot side. Basically, I want to move this engine page over and this PFD page over so I can bring up my nav page and uh, RWR. I'm just going to hit what I did is my engine page, HDD pause, and I'm going to put it on position 3. Go main menu, PFD for this screen, position 2. And main menu, I'm going to go to my nav radar page. Sometimes it won't let you do this on the ground. Let's see if it will. Um, sorry, over HDD pause. We'll go HDD one, and it did let me put it in on the ground this time. And then after this, I'm just going to go overlay RWR, and then that will bring up this purple box and give you some symbology if you start getting air contacts. Our flaps will yell at us if we are not at half flaps. Your flap gauge is right here. You can see them going to half flaps. If you go under power on the ground um, over half flaps, you'll get a warning. Basically, it'll be de -de 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 at you. It's annoying. So right now, we still have our crew door open. Your auxiliary generator and APU power is connected and on. We have our landing lights on and our hydraulic pump on, which will stay on. So we have good starts on all of them. All of the lights turned off. We can go ahead up here and turn just the APU power switch. Our, our engines are running again. We can turn it to off. We can go ahead and turn this APU bleed off because our engines are running. We don't need to use the APU air anymore. And we can go ahead and shut off the APU. That is a full startup. And well, I already closed the door because once we got pressure, once you make sure your uh, pilot door is closed, you're really ready to go. Um, we do have a couple things else we can do down here though to get us set up for our flight and to actually get the autopilot working and flying turning different coordinates <coughs> excuse me I told you I would show you about the radios I'll flash the radio um, screenshot I took up here again and to do that you just have to move the little number or the little buttons above the number to get them to move on that side and then in here to get uh, your UHF radio to the TACOM, all we're going to do is write 26775, which is the TACOM net, and we're going to press U1 and see how it changed that. And then if you go and look kind of back on your um, SRS overlay thing, it, it'll read 26775, and you can also come up in here. And it'll show that it has changed up in here. If we did 23175 for whatever reason, it changes up here. Um, our, our arc is 164. So we're going to go 26775. Get rid of that. If we go into our navigation control, sometimes waypoints 1 through 10 get a little bugged. We'll start at 10. So with those coordinates that we had written down earlier, this is kind of why I like to write them down, so I can get the bird going, get my fuel started, and kind of run through the startup going on. Usually I wouldn't start my engines. I was just kind of showing you how easy it is to actually start up and get going. So right now we're just hanging out on the ground. So we're back at waypoint 10. We're going to go to our first turn. So I'm just going to say LAR turn 1 just because I know that's where we're going. Nobody else is going to see this besides you and me, right? So that coordinate that I wrote down earlier, yours will be different depending on where you go. But we're going to write 2, 7. Oh, that's a 4. So delete. 7, 3, 6, 0, 8, 7. We're just going to write that in up on top. That's going to be our east coordinate. I'm sorry, our north coordinate. <laughs> I looked up at a different page. For our east coordinate, remember we always need to have the zero because it has the additional number. 
Okay, you have the three decimal, it's the decimal minute coordinate, and you always have the zero. So we're going to write zero, five, four, five, four, zero, two, eight, three, seven, one. And we're going to tap, oh, I didn't do it right. I don't talk well and do things at the same time. Zero, five, four, five, four, three, seven, one. All right. That's basically that whole input coordinate done already. All we need to do is increase to our next one, and we have a blank slate to go to again. If you guys wanted to use the first few or whatever, all you got to do to re redo the input, if you mess up down here, like if you notice how I, ha I was supposed to have 371 and it put 370, for whatever reason, it's just what the CDU reads as being accurate. So don't worry about if that last decimal digit is off or it's a little bit off. It's not going to be an exact precise but it should line up with where we need to go. So like I said, we'll go in and just write in another one. Um, we have my bar inbound. We'll just spell it La, L A unbound. So you can only have a certain amount of characters within the boxes, right? Or else you get that CD imp CDU input. In order to get rid of the CDU input, you just need to press clear. So our LAR inbound, I had 2741555. We'll put that in for our north. And then I have 0541585 for my east. And then for my last one, we had, oh, I just lost my, my spot on my phone. We have LAR27. Runway 27. And that coordinate is 27404967. Zero five four two three nine three five east. That's all we need to do for that. If we want to help ourselves and get some visual um, up on our HMD, what we can do is we can press told and take our aircraft weight and extract it. It'll give us our new cargo weight, how long it'll take to take off, and all that good stuff. Next to told on the CDU, if you press index, you can basically put your landing or takeoff data up onto your CDU. So since we're going to take off at this time, we'll just press takeoff data. It'll give you our V1, your refusal, 100 knots to back off and abort your takeoff, your rotate speed, and your climbing speed at whatever percentage your flap is on. If you put your flaps to a different percentage, it should change this number once you extract the data. So we're just going to extract it and leave it on 50 or else it'll yell at us, like I said. It'll say it is extracted. We're going to leave that on. Your pilot and co-pilot engage disengage switches are going to be right down here on your right hip. Very important. Um, to bind this one. I will show that key bind. AP engage not realistic. It looks like it's left control and space um, originally. I just bound it to a different up arrow key. Personally, you can bind it to whatever is easier for you. But that's basically what's going to be um, to, to turn on and off the, the autopilot. You'll hear that autopilot. once it goes off. Autopilot. It'll also come up down in here. So now we have our V1 and our V rotate speeds on. Basically, we are good, on, and ready to taxi. It's just telling us down here that we have our landing lights extended, our landing lights are on, and our hydraulic pumps on. All of those can be on during flight for takeoff, landing, um, obviously, it's, it's good to turn your lights off uh, once you get at altitude. It is a little unfortunate that we do not have um, 
navigation lights or tail lights, wing lights in the Hercules, but hey, it is what it is. I'm just going to do a quick little check here back at where we are, see about the airspace. I don't think I really need to call out that I'm leaving because the air is not uh, filled up. I'm just going to roll into it and I'll show you how I basically set up the autopilot. And then once, once I get in the air, I might uh, do another quick little clip as we're coming down for a landing just to kind of show how I come in and how you can almost fly the autopilot uh, all, all the way in, to the ground. I'm not going to quite fly it to the ground. I'll probably a couple hundred feet above. I'll take control, but I'll walk you through that step here. So we're basically going to enter over here at Echo. I already checked the F-10 map. I know we're clear. I'm not going to call out. There's only one other person on a side of me on the net right now. I'm hit it. The steering is a little bit goofy uh, until it, the steering locks. I, I kind of just give it a little kick. So my curves are a little interesting for the rudder in the Hercules, but you can see we're already bracing at our V1 and our V1 rotate. I'm going to start pulling up a little bit. We're already off the ground. I'm going to gear up. I'm going to level out and start gaining a little speed here. I'm going to go flaps up one as well. And with my key bind, I'm already going to press that autopilot switch. So you can see down on our HUD down here that autopilot is on. So I don't have to worry about, you know, looking down and finding that switch and pressing it when, and holding once we get to the end of the runway, I'm going to start my climb a little bit, 190 knots, which is faster than it was saying, but we can go at a 10 degree. So basically now here what we can do is I've also bound my vertical speed, but for video purposes, all you need to do is press vertical speed. If you depress it, uh, typically it'll go down, you know, you can press it again and hold it. But since we have our navigation, you know, we're just going straight out. Vertical speed is basically your increase or decrease in altitude. If we go down here, we don't have to press this yet. We can go back to nav control and see where our turn is, our bearing and our distance to it, right? I don't have to really worry about anything that's going on down in here. I'm gonna put a flap up one just because we're getting you know, 100, 200 knots going up. It will automatically catch my vertical speed. All I'm gonna do to get to my waypoint, you know, now that I've got a, a decent amount of uh, distance between me and the runway, I'm going to press navigation, and you'll see down here, it, it kind of does a, uh, a violent turn. It's not very smooth to start off with, but our, our heading, basically knob pipper, if we were to rotate this by ourselves, is going to rotate. But since we have put the coordinates in down here, it's basically already going to that spot. So it'll automatically turn us to our navigation point that we have and get us lined up on there. We're still climbing at a five degree in, uh, you know, climb increase. If you come over, this is your altitude select knob. It will show up, see nothing's up here above your altimeter. If you rotate that up, we're gonna cruise today at Angel's 11,500 feet. And all I'm gonna do is press set. So it disappeared at 11,000 feet. It also came up here and said, hey, we're gonna stop at 11.5 and we will let you know when. It'll put an auto stop on it. So since that vertical speed is on, and we can do this going down as well. So like I said, I'll, I'll, I'll come back when we uh, are in our approach and show you how I kind of can fly it down just with the autopilot as well. Um, but yeah, it'll I'll, I'll climb us up here to 11,000 and as long as the vertical speed you can, is to where you can actually climb and maintain your speed, you could walk away You know, at, at this point. Um, you, you could just leave it full throttle. If you want to do auto throttle, which I, I like to use when, when I land, it's just a, a, an easy thing. Another way you can go almost full hands off everything to land. But basically, if you rotate this reference set knob, this number will increase will also see this um, little marker rolling up and meet our 
current speed, if we press auto throttle on, it does sound like we are, see how it's kind of moving up. The computer catches it and takes it to flight idle and then moves back to basically try to catch itself up and get itself, um, we'll call it aligned. Once it's doing that, you can see we're, we're going back and it's trying to reach our 250 <laughs> I'm sorry, it's trying to reach our 250 knot um, goal. We, we can put that all the way up. To, it'll start clicking at you at 320, 315 if you start going um, you know, on a descent. Uh, with, when you're loaded like this, we're probably not going to get above much 280, 285. So we'll just put it at 285 and see if we can reach it. Uh, like I said, at this point, we can go ahead and turn our lights off. Supposed to turn. Supposed to have your lights on below 10,000 feet. So we're above 10,000 feet, and uh, turn all that good stuff off. We still have our pump on, which is our only thing going on. We have 142 miles until our destination, and I'll kind of show you right here, real quick, how I'm going to go full hands off everything, and it will level us off. Um, yeah, it's kind of violent right here, but we're getting close to our 11,000. 500 and then it'll kind of do a gradual increase as we go up this last hundred feet and eventually we'll level off so i'll cut it right here and i will see you when we are inbound at lar What's up? Welcome back. So we did a little time lapse of the last few minutes as we're coming in over the coast here. And as you can see now, instead of going north, we've already started to turn. So we've we've hit our T1 turn that I had input already while we've been up in here. So the autopilot is still going to continue us over to our turn two inbound turn, which should pretty much put us aligned with our runway heading. Typically, it does line us up a little to the west, or I'm um, sorry, a little to the left, which would be south in this case. Um, also, another thing to note, we'll come back out here into the nighttime sky. It's night. Uh, we'll come back down in here. But one thing to note is when we turn, we'll turn back on our flashlight here for you. Um, once we get to our waypoints basically our turn is going to start well the CD is going to advance our waypoint to the next waypoint two miles before so once this distance to target hits two miles it's going to go to our LAR turn um, so when you guys are going in so LAR is right down in there so we're just going to be making another little bit of a left turn on our inbound and starting our descent uh, looks like we're five miles so like I said once we hit two that's going to turn in uh, it's going to make little adjustments to keep us on, a, on our new course uh, for these four miles. But just kind of be, be wary of that um, when you're setting your waypoints. That if, if you're trying to do a, a specific drop or something and you make your waypoint, say you're trying to do a troop drop on, on a target area and you make your point right at the beginning of the point, well, you're actually going to start turning away to your next waypoint two miles before that point. So maybe use the measuring tool in the map and measure a different two miles. So now, see, we've hit that two mile zone. I'm sorry I didn't show you. Um, dang it. But now we've already started to turn, and we know our headings at uh, our runway headings at 270. So we're at a 269 right now from the runway. So we're going to be pretty much lining up for it as we come in. So my hands have been totally off stick up until this point. You know, um, I'm, all I'm going to do right now is. I'm going to tap my stick forward and then I'm going to hold my vertical speed basically where I want to hold on the runway there. That's a little steeper than I wanted, but it's okay. I usually have a key bind for that. I can show you guys that one here again as well. But basically, when we are going in our 
climb vertical speed at like a five degree up. Now we're going to like a six degree, six and a half degree down. We're going to be coming down between Angels 10, so I'll put my lights back on. We'll go ahead and turn our taxi lights on for now as well. We're holding at 285 and descending past Angels 9 now. It looks like we are 11 miles from LAR itself. I don't have any more coordinates in here, so we're not going to turn off of it once we get there, so it's okay. If I did have another uh, waypoint in here, um, we could basically turn off of our course, and that's where we get into the problems with drops. Um, so like I said, you can as we're in our descent here, you can kind of go into the map and say, say you wanted to do a drop here and press the ruler up on top here. Just measure out, you know, two miles. So we know, say, hey, if we don't want to make make a turn, or we want to make a drop here, but we don't want to turn here, we got to make this probably two miles this way. And we have to just watch our CDU page for our two mile area, mile and a half area, and see where we want to drop our stuff. But so now we're going pretty fast coming in here because I wasn't, you know, paying attention and doing stuff. So we're just going to roll this speed back real quick. Pretty much 200 knots. We're going to go, all I'm going to go is pull back out of the stick a little bit and get ourselves in a different, you know, a little bit better. I'm still going to leave that heading on because we can do that. So I'm basically going to hold our vertical speed here. And then this is our heading knob if we come out of nav. So see how I, I moved our... Uh, increase decrease nav control point off we could also use this down here our heading bug and it will move our heading control and we can kind of fly left and right this way and give it a little bit of fine tune so we're still I'm I'm hands off my throttle and hotas I'm using my mouse right now with my other hand in my lap if we kind of look at this uh, marker this is our vertical speed indicator this is going to kind of show us where we're going to go as we're landing and if you're doing drops this seems to be this line and this this area seems to be more where the aircraft is going to go. Went back in the back there on accident. <laughs> uh, so we're just going to bring her in here a little bit. We still have no flaps, so we're going to put our flaps down, put our gear down, go flaps half on this. If you wanted to come down here, we're at two miles. We could press our index like we did. You could do this before also. You do landing data and extract it just same as we did earlier in the takeoff. So we're at 180 knots, still coming down. We'll try to slow our way, way down, way, way down. That should be good. It says we can touch down at 118. So like I said, I still haven't touched anything except the heading knob and the vertical speed, basically. You know, we're at getting pretty close to the runway. I didn't put our elevation in the runway, so maybe that's still why it says up there 2,800 feet. Maybe that's why people do it. I don't need to, you know. I just kind of personally go watch. So we're at 120 knots, you know, half flaps, our gear's down, and I just basically took the stick in control now, and I'll hand fly it in. We're at touchdown speed, five feet. You can see at the bottom here, I'm gonna dump my throttle. And our R is basically how far we are. Touchdown at one. The steering's kind of interesting at speed, which try not to touch it much. Like I said, if you're uh, half half flaps, it won't yell at you. If you need to go full flaps or or longer, and you try to, we'll go up to the next taxiway just for demonstration purposes. Mm -hmm. But you get that. Uh, that alarm going off and we'll start going back to left it'll kick it off your um, nose wheel steering so if you put your flaps back up to half once you go give it throttle on your engines as we are now just give it a little bit it won't yell at you and beep and tell you hey you messed up but so that's basically it that's how I run the autopilot and how I set up the CDU like I said it's super super simple um, and one of the, I think it's one of the easier ones to try to learn on uh, just the CDU stuff in general if you guys are having problems and questions or worried about it. The thing really floats. Um, like I said, that was half flaps. I have a load. It, you just watch your speed coming in. This helps a lot uh, if, if you have questions about, you know, how, how, how fast you should be going and when and where. Just press that told. Uh, when you start and get your aircraft weight, extract it, and then you have your takeoff data 
or your landing data depending on what you're doing and then just extract it and you can read its information if you have the time it'll also show up on the HUD up here and all you got to do is match and just make sure again you have the latitude longitude with the decimal minute 2745 with three digits and then you add the zero in front of the Easter looks like we have another F-16 coming in to get some of these goodies Guess we can go try to unload some of him for some for him here in a minute so I'll take off I hope you guys have a good time flying hope this helps uh, with some questions about the autopilot stuff it's really easy vertical speed to hold you know how whether five degrees up or down basically is where you're going to be pretty safe and uh, your navigation and or heading your auto throttles down here and controlled by here hope this helps to see you guys later